Hello, everybody, and welcome to what is, strangely enough, our eighth monthly uh, webinar dealing with Office and all that. This is Bob Coppinge, and I got Michelle here as well, and yeah, we're going to get started. So, again, if you have, if you do have any issues or anything like that, give us a holler, either support at simplex-it.com or give us a call, 234-380-1277. And uh, we will be putting it up on YouTube and uh, all that. So, a couple of key things. We actually did plan ahead for once. And what you're hopefully seeing are the webinar topics we have going on starting in uh, August uh, through January. So, hopefully this is going to be a number of topics. And this is actually partially due to a questionnaire we sent out to subscribers of our newsletter and some of the feedback we got back. So hopefully this is useful. Uh, as always, we'd love to hear other topics uh, of interest that you'd like us to cover, but that's hopefully a good start. And then also we have our monthly luncheonars, uh, which we'll, there is, we do those online as well, but we also do those in person. That's a free lunch. And uh, starting next week will be our next one where uh, Kevin and Steve will be talking about virtualization for the small media businesses. There'll be a little bit of technology, but mostly it's going to be talking about why does that make sense uh, for small, medium businesses and, uh, uh, you know, as far as consolidating your old servers and all that kind of thing. And I certainly don't want to leave out on August 13th, our seventh annual, hard to believe, uh, Simplex IT Picnic here at our worldwide international headquarters. Uh, yeah, we're going to have some geek stuff. We're going to be showing off Google Glass, uh, some of the Nook hardware. Uh, we'll probably be doing some stuff with Microsoft Azure to show that, but for the most part, it's just a chance to have some burgers, brats, uh, relax, and hopefully the sunshine, uh, play some games, uh, all that good fun stuff. And as always, all of these things are free, open to the public, and uh, that's pretty much what we've got. Uh, next month is going to be uh, introduction to Visio, I think. No word. Oh, it's going to be word. I don't know how to write the the, uh, <laughs> the uh, PowerPoint, so it's actually going to be word talking about uh, watermarks and some other things, and uh, so and I'll probably get it right. But but the but in September it's going to be introduction. Yeah, to there you so go. That's that's, uh, that's it. So this is basically a demonstration of why I don't do these presentations <laughs> and Michelle does. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Michelle. Okay, thank you. Yep. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Today's webcast is the um, how to work with Excel charts in 2013. Some of you may have 2010. There's a lot of similarities, um, but there definitely are some differences in the newer version. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is the first thing you want to do when you're working with charts is to select and highlight the data, the series of data that you want to plot. So in this case, I'm going to highlight my items that I have in my months along with the numbers that I have listed. You can highlight your data. You can click and do Control A to select your data, depending on what you want to do. Um, and then you can also, if you just want to highlight just a group, a series, of one series or multiple series, go ahead and do that. Now on the insert ribbon, we're going to go to the insert ribbon, you're going to go notice that there is a charts section and there's all kinds of different chart types that you can choose from. For instance, you can choose column charts, you can choose bar charts, you can choose um, area charts. Now there is a button in the bottom right hand corner of the chart section that says see all charts. Um, please make sure that your microphones are muted. I hear somebody's microphone in the background, um, so we need to make sure that all microphones are muted at this time. Then um, if I click on that button to um, see all the charts and click on the All Charts ribbon or tab, you can see that it has them broken up into categories such as column charts, different types of column charts. You have 2D uh, charts versus 3D charts. You have line charts that you can do, pie charts, area charts, stock charts. The one um, style that I noticed that was missing here was bubbles. 
but I did notice that it sometimes appears in the recommended charts tab. So if I click on that tab, a new feature in 2013 is this recommended charts tab, meaning based on the data that you selected, it's going to give you recommendations of different chart types that would work with the series of data that you've selected. And if you notice, when I do get down to the bottom here, there is a bubble chart style, though that style was not listed here. The other new feature in 2013 is what's called the combo, which is where you can actually select um, a series and make it a different style than the rest of the bars. And you could do this in the past by selecting the series and going to select chart type and choosing the, the style that you wanted, but they did, they added this new feature. And then another one is templates, where after you design your chart, you can actually go in and save that as a template. So if your company has certain color schemes that you're supposed to use, and you have logos and things like that that you want to use, you can save that as a template and apply that to your chart. And that's something I'll show you in a little bit. So I'm going to go to the recommended chart tab, I'm going to select the bubbles and hit OK. Now the problem with um, you inserting a chart this way is that it inserts it into the worksheet that you're on. Some people might want the chart on the same worksheet, other people might want it on a different sheet, therefore you'd have to click on the move chart button and say that you want it on a new sheet and name your sheet. But what I'm going to do that's a little bit different here is I'm going to delete this chart by hitting my delete key. I'm going to select my data and then I'm going to hit my F11 key on my keyboard. When I hit F11, it's automatically going to create a chart on a new sheet. Now the F11 button will create a basic chart type where it's going to do a basic column chart and as you can see by the style, that's actually what it picked automatically when I hit F11. But now I can go through and start changing the chart type and pick what I want. And now it's on a new sheet and I don't have to worry about moving it. Also in the bottom right hand corner, you'll notice there's a plus and minus. Allows you to increase and decrease the size of the chart on the screen if you need to. So if you need to see more of it, you can. And so now also you have above chart tools, you have two ribbons. You have the design ribbon and the format ribbon. In 2013, they cut those ribbons down to two. In 2010, there's a third ribbon. I think it's analyze. I can't remember exactly. But that ribbon in 2013 is no longer there. So most of the designing of your, your um, working with your chart is mostly on the design tab on the format ribbon would be more things like inserting graphics like if you want to insert arrows to point to your chart or if you want to add um, work with word art or change the text in your chart. What you have to be careful of is if you click in the gray area of the chart over here to the left the ribbons at the top will disappear. You need to make sure that you're inside your chart somewhere. Doesn't matter where, but basically you just want to make sure that you're there so that you get the correct um, tabs that pop up. Now, I'm going to go to the Change Chart Type button here. Now that I have a chart and I want to change the style, I'm going to click on that button. Down here on the left are all the categories of charts that I can choose, plus the recommended chart style that we saw before when we went to the Insert tab. I'm going to do a column chart, and I'm going to do a 3D clustered chart type and hit OK. So now that it's changed that chart style over here on the left, so that's the nice thing about charts. As you're working with them at any point, you can always change the style of chart that you're working with. Then I'm going to click here where it says Quick Layout. The Quick Layout button is also here. You see that you can go over it. What I like about it is you can quickly go over through the little layouts that it gives you to see what it's going to add to your chart. This particular one would add a data table at the bottom. This one would add labels above. This one would, um, you know, this one has them close together without separation. Some of them are spaced different. So based on what you, you choose, if you choose anything, those are the quick layouts that you can choose from. But I'm going to show you how to add the labels and stuff manually yourself. 
The other thing that it has is the color choices. This is new, where you have basic colors that you can choose from, and you can go through, and it has the live preview so you can see your color choices. You can also um, go down to the more monochr monochromatic um, colors if you want, and you can choose those. I'm going to go ahead and just pick this color in the purple theme and go with that. And then you have a section here for chart styles. And as you hover over the different styles, you can see based on the choices that you made that there are different styles. And this button is called the More button. So when you click on it, there are more styles for you to choose from. So you can go in with darker backgrounds. You can go more with darker colors. As you can see at the bottom, it's shadowed. You can go here, depending on what you pick. Some of them look the same. It's just based on what you choose. And just click on that chart style and apply it to your chart. Quick way of formatting it if you want. The other button that's very nice is this switch row column button. You'll notice down here I have my legend. And it has the items and it tells me what color the bars represent. So you can see that I have my, um, my putters, my golf clubs, all grouped by month, January, February, March. If I click on the switch row column button, it will actually switch that data so that now I have each of the items listed below and I have January, February, March for each of those items. So depending on how you want to view your data, you can use that switch row column button to change it up depending on how what you need. The select data button is a button that you click on when you want to add more data to your sheet and add it to your chart. So I'm going to go to the first quarter sheet tab and under shoes I'm going to add shirts and then I'm going to go ahead and type in some numbers and I'm going to go back to my chart and you're going to notice that that it hasn't been added to the chart. It's because I didn't insert it in the middle. I inserted it at the end. So, excuse me, I need some water today. I'm going to go to the Design tab, and I'm going to click on the Select Data button, and I'm going to re-highlight my series to include the shirts, and hit OK. And now, if you look below, Shirts has been added to my data. I can change my data also. I'm going to hit the Select Data button. I'm going to highlight A4 through D6. But now I want to include gloves and shirts, but not tees and shoes. So I'm going to put my Control key down, and I'm going to highlight gloves, and then I'm going to hold it down and highlight shirts. So I held my control key down <coughs> to select non-adjacent data. When I hit OK, you'll see that tees and shoes are not in my group. So I can do that also at any time. I'm going to go back to my sheet tab here, and I'm going to add a, a, a line called goal. Because what I'm going to do here is create a goal line and show you how to use the combo chart style. So I'm going to go back to chart. I'm going to go back to design. I'm going to click on the select data button. Now I am going to hold my control key down when I select the goal line. And then I'm going to hit OK. Now I have, if you notice, a new one that says goal. I'm going to click on the goal series bar here. I'm going to go to change chart type. Now, it's going to bring up a message that says you cannot create 3D combo charts, um, meaning that I can't combine a 3D column chart with a 2D line chart. And that stands for two-dimensional versus three-dimensional. So I'm just going to hit change chart. And then down here, you can see that the combo is selected for the category. And then over here, it has the different... Um, it's using a clustered column for all of these. But for the goal series, I want to use the line with markers. So if I hit OK, now I've created a goal line. So this is my goal for the month, and is see which, which products have met 
that goal or have not met that goal. So um, that's what I did where now I've just created a combo chart where I have columns and then I have lines. Now on the upper left hand corner of the design ribbon is a button that says add chart element and I'm going to go through each of these individually. Now automatically in my chart you'll notice that I have a uh, category axis down below and a value axis or as they like to call it now a horizontal and vertical axis. I'm going to click here where it says more axis options and it's going to bring up the formatting pane on the right hand side. This formatting pane is what we're going to be working with a lot when we're dealing with our charts. And based on what we have selected, you can see down below that it's selected my horizontal axis, but I'm going to click here on the vertical one. And then over here on the right, I have some buttons and one of them has a, a chart. It says axis options. I'm going to click on it and then I'm going to click on the little um, arrows pointing to the categories so you can see where we can go. Like if I wanted to change the scale, the scale right now goes up to 900. But if I wanted it to go to a thousand, I could just put in a thousand in there. If I wanted to change the the units from 100 to 200, I could type that in. And so now I've changed my scale. Down below, tick marks. Tick marks are the little marks that you see next to the numbers. So if I choose a major chick tick mark cross, cross means inside and outside. I don't know if you notice, but you'll see a little line that's a little thicker next to the main number, and it's inside the chart and outside the chart. That's what a cross means. I also want maybe little tick marks in between. So you can see now I have those little tick marks in between. Now if I go to number and I want to format the numbers over there, say I choose currency and then I go ahead and say I want zero decimals, now you can see that I formatted the numbers on the left to dollars and I have um, zero decimals. So now I have my, my um, I've updated my vertical axis. If I go to the bucket and click on line, then if I wanted to, I could create a little gradient line and I can ch change my line colors if I want and pick whatever I want. Now if I click away from it, you'll kind of see that I have a line that's like thicker in color and gets thinner in color as I go up. So this is something that I, that you're really going to have to look at when you click on these because there's so many different options. You can see fill in line, effects like shadows and glows if you want to apply it to an object. So depending on what you have selected, this, this window over here is going to bring up the formatting features. Then you can click here and you can say if you want to format the series, um, the glove series, you just select it. That's a way of selecting the chart features and then also formatting those chart features so you can actually keep this up on this whole day. All right, somebody please mute your, your phone. I'm hearing conversation in the background. I heard an echo. Um, so I'm going to right, go back to add chart elements. I'm, gonna go to, I'm still hearing it. Somebody is echoing. This message will be changed. I'm hearing an echo. I tried to I tried to mute that person. Is that that? Oh, maybe it's them. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. No all right. Sorry for the interruption. Thank you very much. Um, all right. Um, let's continue on. Now let's go with the title. So back to chart elements. Go to axis title. 
And if you wanted to add a title, for instance, if you wanted to add a title that said dollars, so I, add, I select title, I click three times to select it. I'm going to type dollars in here and click away and then click back on the title. Then over here, my formatting window says format access title. So there's two um, options here. One is for the box itself, and then notice one here that says text options. So if I click on it, and I have different um, formatting features I can do for the box, for the text itself, one of the things is this text box button where I can actually go here to where it says text direction and change it to be stacked. So now I have the text going up and down on my screen over here. And then if I wanted to put a horizontal title down here, I could. But since I know those are months, I don't need to do that. So and then if I wanted to format this, all I had to do was click three times. It brings up the live preview window where you can click and change the font color if you want, make it bold, whatever you want to do with it. Now, going back to add chart element chart title. Well, you can see I already have a title over here. So I'm going to go ahead and select the title and I'm going to type first quarter cells. If I can type. <laughs> and I can also select that text if I want. I can I'm clicking too many times here. I can format it if I want. I can change the font, whatever I want to do. The only thing that you can't do with a title, you can move it. So you can click on the border of the title and put in your mouse here. You can drag it wherever you want. You just can't stretch it. You can't stretch it out. Though down here for the legend box, this is the only one. You see how I can stretch this out and make it longer? But I can't do that with any of the titles. I can't do it with a vertical title. I can't do it with a title. So another thing that people do sometimes is they'll go in and insert a text box. So if I go to the Insert menu ribbon and click on the Text Box button and then click here and type First Quarter Sales, then I can actually use the little circles here and I can stretch out the box. And then I can make the text bigger. I can center it, I can make it bold, I can change the color if I want and the font and you know make it smaller, whatever I want to do. Now the other thing too is sometimes when you're working with a text box is the text may not look like it's centered. So again if I go over here to text options, if I go to the box here that says text box and I choose the vertical alignment middle, it'll move it up to in the middle of the screen. And so now if I go back and click on it, go to the bucket, I'll do a quick gradient fill in there for my font, and then I can move it over. So you can use a text box for your title instead of a chart title, whatever one you want to use. Now I'm going to go back over to design, go over here to add chart element, go back to data labels, and I can choose center, I can choose inside end, inside base, or a new one that they've created in 2013 is called data callout, which is kind of interesting, where you can create a callout, notice it has the month, and then it has the value. But if you didn't want the month, and you just wanted the value, you could click on the series, and you can only do one series at a time, but you could go over here to label options and you can choose to, I'm going to click here on the little chart because anytime I'm changing anything about the chart itself, I'm going to go to label options, uncheck category name, and then it shows the value. I can also put that label in the center. So now I have the label in the center and I have a little call out in there. So that's a new feature. That's kind of interesting. Gives it a different look. But there's some other things you can do. So I'm going to go back and make sure that the chart area is selected. When I say make sure the chart area is selected, I mean click on the edge here so that you can see the, the bot chart being selected. So that when you go to add chart element and you go to data labels none, it removes them all. 
Otherwise, if you have a series selected, it's going to, you're going to have to remove the series individually one at a time. Now I'm going to add the data labels in the center. And I'm going to click on the first series here of labels. And I'm going to go over here to the right and click on the chart button again. Go to label options. One of the things that I'm going to do is I am going to Actually, I need to go to text options. That's where I wanted to go. And I wanted to go back to my text box. Is I wanted to do that stacked again so that it's up and down. Now, because I'm going to have to do this for every single series, I'm going to use my repeat key. My repeat key is my F4 key. So I'm going to click once on the numbers, hit F4, click here on this series, F4, click here on this series, F4. So now I've repeated everything that I did, the last thing that I just did. Now I want to format these because they're a little dark, I can't see them. But if I went to the home ribbon and formatted or right clicked and used the live preview toolbar, it would only remember the very last thing that I did. So I wanted to remember all the choices that I make. So I'm going to right click, go to font to bring up the font dialog box, I'm going to change the font color, I'm going to make it bold, and I'm going to make it 14. Now it's going to remember all of these choices when I hit OK. Now I'm going to click on the next series, F4. Next series, F4. Next series, F4. I've just repeated everything I did in that font box for all of the numbers in my bars. Another new feature that they have, if you right click on the number, you have change data label shape. So if I want to, I can pick one of these shapes that's listed here, and then I can do, again, the F4, the F4, the F4. And then if I wanted to format those numbers, I could right click and go to font again. I could choose the green color. Maybe I want green. Maybe I want it to be bold. Maybe I want it to be uh, 12, and I'll hit OK. So now, again, F4, F4, F4. So what I've done now is I've added my labels, but I was able to format them quickly and make them all look the same without having to go through all those steps every time for each series. All right, so now I'm going to click here on the legend down below. Of course, when you have your legend and you have your uh, bars at the bottom, you can, if you want, if you go ahead and increase the size of that, it will increase the box next to it. You can make it bold. You can shade it if you want, if you want to do a pattern inside. But the, with the legend, you can stretch it out, unlike the chart titles, the titles that are in a chart. Now over here on the design ribbon, back to add chart element, it has a data table. A data table is a table where it shows the, the actual worksheet and you can see, so you could do it with the legend keys and then get rid of the legend by just clicking on it and deleting it if you want. Um, you could also add a data table with no legend keys. If you do choose the data table and you select it, over here in the right, you can format that table if you want. You can choose to take out the lines if you want to, depending on what you want to do. And I'm going to just remove the data table because I don't want it. The other types that you can do is the error bars. If you notice, if I do standard error or percentage, the differences, it does it to all the series, even the line, it does it. So it's doing it for all of them because I have the chart area selected. If I just want to do it for a series, say for instance I select the um, shirts, then if I go up here and say error bars percentage, then I have the error bars just for that series. If I click on the error bars and go to the chart button here, then I can do plus or minus, negative or positive, 
And then I can select whether I want a fixed value to put in there or I want a percentage to put in there to show me where I would need to be to have a 20% increase. And therefore, it would show me that I need to be about here for the next month. If I want, I can choose to remove those bars by just choosing none. Trend lines. So we've already talked about, oh, there's grid lines. So we can only add, you can add additional grid lines if you needed to. Trend lines are forecast. So if I did linear and it only does it for a series, so it says putters, I'll choose putters and hit um, OK. You can see that for the putters, it's showing me my direction in which I'm going, that I'm going up. If I wanted to, if I click on that, trend line and go to the chart button over here. I could also forecast it out two months and it would give me an idea of where I need to be in that two in the next two months and it adds it to the legend. So it tells me that line that you see there what it stands for. Now if I remove that trend line and let's say that some people, what they do is sometimes they'll draw a line. So you could go to format, you can pick one of the line options, you could actually draw your line if you want. I can't draw a very good line if you want to do it that way. Or the way that we did it where we actually created on the worksheet the goal that we were trying to reach and we used a combo line chart for that. So you can see that there's many options that you can choose when you're working with the chart. You can create your own combo chart, you can draw a line, or you can use the trend line feature. So just showing you where it is, letting you play with that on your own so that you can kind of figure out what it is that you want to do. And the trend line lines do only do work with two-dimensional charts. They don't work with the three-dimensional chart. So if you are using the three-dimensional format, you may find that the trend line is not available as an option because of that, that reason. Now, I'm going to talk about formatting my bars. So I'm going to click on my series here, and I'm going to go over here to the bucket, and I can do a solid color if I wanted to change the color. I could do gradient colors so I can pick my own color schemes that I want for the chart and I can choose the direction I want those those to, to appear. I can do patterns so I can go here and pick colors that I want and then choose those patterns for look like a pair of golf pants. So I can choose that pattern for that particular series. I could go to picture and I can choose a from a file that I already have a picture that I already have online or I could go online. 2010 will not have this online button. Uh, you'll have to go to the internet directly and search for your images and then copy and paste them into the series. But in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and type putters. And I'm going to choose this putter that comes up. And I'm going to go ahead and hit insert. And as you can see, it inserts that putter into the bar. Now, you can stretch the image or you can choose to stack the image so that it stacks it on top of each other and gives it a different look. Then I click on the next series. I go to picture, go to online. Now I'm going to say golf driver. I'll pick this driver here. I'll hit insert. I can hit stacked. Then I can click here and I can do picture again online. This is gloves. I have to go golf gloves. Select it and insert. I can stack that if I want. Now I'm just the next one I'm going to show you if you had 2010. If you go to the internet And I'm going to go to um, Microsoft so I get the same images that I was getting before. 
And in here, I'm going to, no, I don't want to make it the home page. <sighs> All right. Anyways, you would go online. Let's just go to Google. We'll, do, we'll go to Google. So I'll type, um, what is it, golf shirts? And I'll click on images. And then I can right click on it and go to copy. I can go back to the chart and then just do control V, which is paste. And that would do the same thing. So if you didn't have the online, I do know some companies turn off that online feature here. Don't let you go online to get the images. I don't know why they do that, but um, they do. So just in case that happens, you can still go on the internet and get the images, just copy them and then just paste. Then if I want to put a graphic in the background, I'm only going to, I'm going to go back online. I'm going to do golf course. And the reason I'm going to show you this one is because if you put it in the background of the plot area, then you can actually make it transparent. There's a transparency button here to make it a little bit transparency. So you have that image, but it's not clashing with the chart itself. Now here I have this, this line chart. So this is a separate uh, type of chart. So if I click here, one of the things was the labels. So if I click on the label options here for this chart and go to the chart button, labels, and if I just wanted to show this above the chart, and then if I wanted to go to the bucket and maybe kind of fill that in so you can see the numbers better, that's my goal line. And then I can select the line itself. I can format that line. And then there's something called a marker. When you're working with a line chart, you have markers. And if I click on the marker button here, I can actually go to marker options, built in, change the style of the marker. And I can also, if I want, I can insert an, an existing image, but this would have to be on your computer. So I'm going to change the size of the marker to 20. But then, maybe I'll make it 15. Then I'm going to go to picture, online, and I'm going to type golf ball. And what I'm going to put in the center of that is a golf ball. So now I have my line and that was an example of formatting a line chart also so even though you have column charts you can format your line charts and you can work with those both ways so if you have certain products or things that you want to enhance and show on the chart you can now the other thing i wanted to talk about so we talked about the add chart element over here but now in 2013 you have three buttons here. You have a plus, and again, this is another way of adding things to your chart. So if you wanted to add the error bars, you could do it here. If you wanted to add the trend line, you could do it here. And then if you did that, then you would go here to the little arrow, and you could go to more options, which would change this window over here. So the purpose of the plus is to actually add items instead of having to go up here. So it works both ways. The button that you have here is for the chart styles. So if you click on that, it actually brings up the different styles that you see up there on the ribbon. And also you can change the colors too, as you can on the ribbon. They're just giving you another, another area to go and change the type of chart that you're working with. But the one nice thing that's, that I like is this filter button. This is really a nice feature. It's almost like you're creating a pivot chart. So you click on this filter, and you, right now you see that I'm seeing all of these items on my chart. Well, not all of them, the ones that I selected. So if I hit select all, and I say that I only want to see putters and shirts for January, March, and I hit apply, that's all I'm going to see. 
So I can, I can actually, I don't have to go back and keep changing the data that I want to see. I can filter it. So once you add the items to your chart, you can actually filter it, you can print it, or you can copy and paste it to PowerPoint, which is the next thing we'll be doing. Well, actually, we'll, we'll be doing that after we talk about the template. So I'm going to go back to Select All. Go back to Select All and hit apply so that it brings back now understand that it's not oh yeah we're fine we're fine it's showing everything that i need it to show so that's the nice thing about the funnel i can change this chart as i want and then i can copy the parts print what i want or copy the parts that i want to powerpoint and we're going to do that in a minute but the first the next thing i want to talk about is we went through all this formatting for this chart and basically we want maybe to save this as a template. Now in 2010 on the, on the design ribbon where it says change chart type, which is actually over here, there's a button next to that that says save as template. But in 2013, they removed that button. The only way to get that save as template is to right click. Make sure that the chart area is selected because when you right click, you'll see that it says save as template. Over here, if you right click, you'll see save as template. But sometimes if you're in a, in a different area, you may not see it. Just make sure that when you right click, you see the save as template button. I don't know why they got rid of it. It's a, it's a great feature. I don't know why they hit the button and just didn't put the button on the toolbar. But it's still there. So if you click on it, what you're doing is you're saving this as a template. So I'm going to call it my golf chart. Let it default to the template folder because this template can also be used in Microsoft PowerPoint. So I'm going to hit save. Now, if I go back, let's say later I want to create a chart with these three items. If you remember, when I select my chart, I hit my F11 key. Now, I'm going to click on change chart type, go to the template folder, there's my golf chart and I'm going to hit OK. Now one of the things you're going to notice about this, when you are working with images, it's not always, it's always going to remember the order of the images that you created the chart. So it's not going, it's going to save those images. They're not always going to match up. So you notice that these are tees, not gloves. So for this particular one, if you're working with colors, your templates are going to work fine. But if you're working with images, you got to make sure that the text matches the images. So um, I could go back and, and so I can format that if I need to. I can go online. I can type golf tees. See what I get. There's a T. Pick it. Hit insert. And there's my golf tees now. So just so you, know, you know, if you are working with images and you're saving it as a template, it remembers those images in the order so they may not always match. All right, so now I'm going to go back to my original chart. I'm going to make sure that I click in the chart area. I'm going to go to the home ribbon. The one way to know if you've got the chart area selected is it does say chart options here, format chart area. Another reason is on the format ribbon over here, this current selection button, which I think should be on the design ribbon, but it's over here. It tells me that the chart area is selected. Then if I go home and, and increase the font size, change the font color, <coughs> make it bold, Notice how it's affecting all of the text on my chart. So it's affecting my text, vertical text category, my title, except for this one because that's a separate, that's not a chart title, that was a text box. That's why that's not being affected. My legend, my labels, everything is the same. So if you don't want to spend time uh, formatting all of the labels on your chart and you want to make them look the same, just make sure that the chart area is selected so that way when you're going here and you're formatting the text, it's global. It even changed the text in my little label boxes. So it's making everything the same. That's because the chart area is selected. 
Another reason you want the chart area to be selected is because now we're going to copy and paste it into PowerPoint. So I'm going to go ahead and open up PowerPoint. I'm going to open up a blank slide. I'm going to change the go to view because last time I taught this I had the guides up. I'm going to right click and change the layout to blank. I'm going to go back to Excel, click on my chart. I'm going to make sure the chart area is selected and do the control C, which is copy. And then in PowerPoint, I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose this one because it says keep source formatting, but and link data. What that means is if I go over here and I change this in Excel, then when I come back to PowerPoint, I'll see the changes here. So it'll update or if PowerPoint is closed and I open it up, it'll say links have been updated. Do you want to update? So that way, any changes I make to the chart will be updated in PowerPoint. Now, as you also notice, you can animate on the animation. You can animate charts. So I'm going to go ahead and click shape real quick. And it's, it's animating the whole thing. But over here where it says effect options, if I want by category, then it's going to animate just the category. The whole category is going to come in separately. So when I run my presentation, I can do just the whole series. So I can have the putters come in first, the drivers, the gloves, and then the shirts. So even though I created the chart in Excel, I can still animate it in PowerPoint, which is great. The other thing that you can do, Control M brings up a new slide, if you remember, and I'm going to go ahead and bring up my title and content and insert a chart. And I'm just going to pick a generic chart real quick. It has data that I could type in, but I'm just going to ignore that for right now. It brings up the same design and format ribbons that you had in Excel. So if I wanted to create a chart in PowerPoint, I could. Here's all my options. You'll notice that change chart type. I'm going to go to templates. There's my golf chart. I'm going to hit OK. Now, the reason the labels are so small is because I don't have much data here. So I'm going to go back to edit data. And on this little category one, I'm just going to type 500, 600, 700. So here's what happened. The template that I saved in Excel, I can use in PowerPoint. If you create a chart in PowerPoint and you format it, you can right click on it and save it as a template. So if you save it as a template and let it default to the right folder, you can use that template in PowerPoint when you create charts and Excel when you create charts. A very nice feature. So, all right, so back to Excel. I'm going to go back to my sheet. I'm going to highlight and I want to do a quick pie chart. So I'm going to hit F11. I'm going to change the chart type to pie and do the second option and hit OK. And I wanted to show a pie chart because there's some things that you can do with a pie chart that are nice. So I'm going to go ahead and change the chart style to that style. I am going to click on my pie. The first time you select your pie, you get the whole pie selected. Then if you click on a wedge, you just have that wedge selected and then you can click and drag it out and you can expand it or explode it from the pie. I'm going to get rid of my title here. And then I can, again, I could, you know, select each wedge individually if I wanted to. So if I wanted to insert a graphic in there or whatever I wanted to do, I could. But the other thing I can do with the pie is when I right click on it, go to 3D rotation. And when I do that, I can rotate the pie over here on the right. I can rotate it and twist it down. I can change the rotation of it. And I can uncheck auto scale, type in 25 and make it a flat crust. So if you like thin crust or flat crust, that's your option. You can make it thicker, the base thicker, or in this case, 
I made it smaller. Now, I'm going to click on my legend and delete that because I don't want my legend. I'm going to click on my pie, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little plus over here to add my data labels. But I'm going to also, when I check it, click on the arrow here and go to where I want those labels to appear, or I'm going to go to, and they have the data call out, which is nice, or I can go to more options, chart, label, check category, then I can say um, new line, so I don't want a separator, I want the item and then I want the number underneath, and I could put them in the center. And then if I wanted to, you know, I could always format them, make them bigger, make it bold, change the color, whatever I want to do with the labels. So now I have the labels inside of the pie. Now I'm going to go and add word art. So I'm going to click here on word art. I went to the insert ribbon. I'm going to choose a word art style. I'm going to type January sales. I can size that if I want. I can go I can move it up here if I want to move it up here to the left. Well, I'm supposed to be able to move it. Why won't it let me move? Okay. I could go to text effects, I could go to transform, and I can change the direction of it. So if you used to work with Word Art and you remember how you used to change the direction of it, you can still do that. I can also, if I want, go to text options, go here. And then I can do the stacked, which would make it up and down. And I can put it to the side. I'm just going to drag it down like that. There we go. Then I have my plot area. See, plot area graphics. If you're not sure what you're ever formatting, it'll tell you right here. Remember, you have the choices depending on your chart to select the 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 items on your chart that you want to format. I could do the picture background again. Let's say I'll say um, golf course ocean. How's that? And pick one of these nice views and insert that. And then again, I can make it transparent so I can have the background. And then I could copy and paste that to PowerPoint or again, filter. I can filter it. So I can say, because this is all one series, I can say I want to see these, I want to see these, and I want to see these, and hit apply. So as you can see now, I'm only seeing those three items. So it's a really nice, I, li I really, really, really like the filter button. I, I really think it's a nice feature because it lets you change your chart without having to keep reselecting and selecting your data. And finally, back to the worksheet. One of the new features in 2010 and in 2013 was called a sparkline. And not many people knew about a sparkline. They didn't really know what this option was for. What it is is to create a mini chart in a cell. So if I click here, you have a line, column, or win-loss. And win-loss is what you use when you have negative values in your data that you're selecting. So I'm going to hit the column. I'm going to select the numbers that I'm plotting which is this, then it says, where are you putting it? Well, I want it to go in this cell here, which normally that's the rent cell that would show up here, but I don't know why it's not showing. So I'm just going to hit OK. And you can see my little chart in there. I'm going to make my column wider. Now I have my chart. Based on this data here, it's a mini chart. Now I have a sparkline design tab where I can make it a line, keep it a column, or make it a win-loss, depending on my data. I could change the style if I want. I could format the marker colors and make, maybe I want to make the higher one a different color than the lower one, depending on what you want to do. And then you can grab the autofill and you can actually drag it down to copy that chart all the way down for all of the rows if you want it. And so you can do that. Or you can select it and you can choose to clear it if you want, to clear it out. There was a clear button there. 
So that's the purpose of the spark line. The spark line was created for, uh, a, it's, it's just a chart in a cell. That's all it is. So now you can see the different types of charts that we worked with today. I hope that this feature just told me it's not working. So just in time to end the day, um, it kind of crashed on me, but hopefully it'll come back. Here we go. So hopefully you this helped you in, in knowing where the different um, options are for the chart. I know there's a lot of changes in 13, so a lot of where did it go and, and working with it. So hopefully this showed you how to make more exciting charts. And remember, I know that this session goes quickly. It'll be up on YouTube so that you can watch it on your own pace to pick up the notes and the tips that you learned today. Next month's webcast is going to be Word, working with columns and graphics and watermarks and borders and all the fun stuff in Word is what we're going to be working with next month. So I hope you enjoyed today's session. And if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat window. And we'll see you next month. Thank you very much.